of natural rates without providing advantage to any particular bacteria. So it's usually composed of meat and soybean extract. So an example, we have your nutrient agar, your nutrient broth, and your triptych or triptychy soy broth. So itong picture na to, this is actually your triptychy soy broth. Lahat ng microorganisms pinapatubo niya. Wala siyang pinipili. So an example din yung ating potato dextrose agar. Next, we have your enrichment medium. It's actually used to increase the number of microorganisms with unusual physiological characteristics. It will enhance the growth of particular microorganisms, lalong lalo na yung mga pathogenic natin na microorganisms. So it will enrich the growth of pathogenic microorganisms and suppress, inhibit the growth of the normal flora, yung mga contaminants natin. They would also contain specific nutrients and without any additional supplements. But again, depending na naman on that of the organism. There are some organisms, yung mga pathogenic, that would require certain additional requirements. Meron naman yung mga hindi. And also incubated for a certain period and then subcultured to isolate the desired organism. So it can be used as a supplement to agar plates to detect aerobes or anaerobes or microaerophile like your thioglycolate not in a tube medium. It would be a media with additional supplements necessary for the growth of yung mga choosy natin na microorganisms, yung ating mga fastidious. Kaya, minsan dinadagdagan siya ng blood, ng vitamins, ng serum, ng amino acids, ng ating pepton, and that of also your yeast extract. An example would be your yung picture na yan, yung ating buffered charcoal yeast extract. So your buffered charcoal yeast extract, it would actually be utilized to grow your Legionella pneumophila, which is actually the causative agent of your Legionnaire's disease. At si Legionella pneumophila, nangangailangan po siya ng L-cysteine, which is actually being provided by that of your buffered charcoal yeast extract. Another would be your solid type medium. We actually have different types. We have your alkaline peptone water, which actually promotes the growth of your vibrio, not in a species, before it will then be plated into another culture medium, which is your thiosulfate citrate pile salt, or TCBS agar. So, unang una muna, ipapatubo natin yung ating um, specimen with the alkaline pepton broth. And then, si alkaline pepton broth, ang ipapatubo niya lang kasi vibrio. It will inhibit the growth of the other organisms. So, alam na natin, kapag tumubo dito, vibrio na siya. Next, paano natin malalaman yung species talaga ng ating vibrio? Malay ba natin kung vibrio coloration siya or parang hemolyticus? So, ipeplate pa natin siya ulit with that of your TCBS to further determine kung sino bang vibrio yung nag-cause nung ating disease. So, on that of the TCBS agar, yung vibrio coloring natin will then show a fluorescence. Okay? Mag magkakaroon siya ng yellow fluorescence on that of the TCBS agar as compared to that of your parahemolyticus. Di ba wala? Wala siyang fluorescence, wala siyang color, and it would actually be dark, black, not in the colonies. So that is actually how you would then tend to differentiate uh, between different not in a species of your vibrio. Another, we have your selenite F. It's actually for the isolation of your salmonella from that of the feces, the urine, and the water sample. We also have your thioglycolate. That would then... Um, a support enrichment medium that would promote the growth of almost all non-fastidious natin na bacteria. But they can actually be given other natin na mga nutrients like dextrose, vitamin K1, at saka hemin to act as an enrichment naman natin na medium. So it would then promote the growth of certain microorganisms, the pathogenic ones, and then inhibit the growth of the colonizers. So it would be uh, associated with resazurin, which is an oxidation reduction indicator, and thioglycolic acid, which is a reducing agent. 
So these two agents, they would then control that of the oxygen that is actually present in the medium. We also have your tetracyanate, selective enrichment drug for the isolation of salmonella and proteus. It would also be equipped with pile salts and thiosulfate to suppress the growth of the other coliform microorganisms like your E. coli. Kasi ang pinapatubo niya lang yung salmonella at saka yung ating proteus. We also have your gram-negative broth only for the isolation of your salmonella and shigella. And it acts both as an enrichment and a selective na dinamidyo. Bakit siya selective? Because it would only be for salmonella and shigella. It inhibits the growth of the other organisms, especially your gram-positive organisms. Kasi meron siyang dagdag na sodium citrate at saka sodium desoxycholate. Yung primary carbon source niya would also be your manitol. Next, we also have your limb broth, otherwise known as your tod with broth with cholestinalidisic acid. That is only for the growth of your group B streptococci or your streptococcus agalactiae. And then the last two natin na agar, ito yung madalas na ginagamit talaga natin, we have your buff and your cup. We have your blood agar plate that would actually contain 5% defibrinated blood. So, tinatanggal natin yung ating fibrin, kaya hindi nagka-clot yung ating blood. Okay? It would then be utilized for differentiating the different hemolytic patterns of a bacteria. Mamaya malalaman natin yan. Pero ano ba talagang blood ang dinadagdag natin sa ating pump? It can be sheep, it can be horse, it can be rapid natin na blood, it can also be human blood. Pero anong human blood ang tinatanggap lang natin? It would be type O. Kasi wala po antigen yung ating type O blood. Kasi kaya siya yung pinaka-safe na uh, blood to be added for your blood agar plate. Nung time namin, um, kapag third year ka kasi, gumagawa ka din ng agar plate na gagamitin mo for that of your experiment on that particular day also. Um, ang ginagawa namin, pagpasok pa lang, uh, via that of plebotomy, mag-extract kami ng blood dun sa mga classmates namin na type O. And then we place the blood in a flask. Dun sa flask na yun, imimix namin lahat ng mga type O ng blood and then dadagdagan namin ng glass beads. Yung glass beads kasi na yun, yun yung pagkakapitad ng ating fibrin. So, para matanggal yung ating fibrin, kasi diba defibrinated nga na blood, we will then mix the blood thoroughly with that of the glass beads. Para dun siya kumapit dun sa glass beads. At kapag pagtingin mo, lahat na ng fibrin kumapit na dun sa glass beads, we tend to filter yung blood. Itatransfer natin siya, yung blood, yung defibrinated blood, into that of another flask and then it would actually then be incorporated with the agar. So, lulutuin natin siya eventually, yung blood, yung defibrinated blood, with that of the agar. And then it will then be mixed thoroughly with that of each other. And eventually, ipopor na natin dun sa ating mga agar plates. Mamaya, you would actually see a video on how to prepare that of a culture media. But for blood agar, ganun lang siya. Uh, yung pulverized, yung powdered natin na agar, it will then be placed into that of a water and then dadagdagan natin ng blood. And then lulutuin natin siya. And kapag mainit na mainit na siya, naluto na siya usually kasi for several hours, kapag nakikita mong highly diluted na dissolve na po yung ating mga powdered natin na agar, pwede na siyang i-transfer dun sa ating Petri dish and then try to solidify and then incubate. Ganon din po for that of your chocolate agar. It's just heated blood. So blood that has been chemically treated or heated at 80 degrees in order to lyse that of the RBC. And for your cup, it is usually utilized for the juicy natin na microorganisms, yung mga pastidibs, like yung ating naysaria and your haemophilus. Kasi yung ating haemophilus, it would actually require 
two important factors for it to grow. We have your X factor, known as your hemin, and a vitamin, yung ating nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, that's your V factor. So, any questions? Before we go further, can we take a break for seven minutes? Or ituloy-tuloy na lang muna na tin and then we try to resume na lang ng mga siguro 12.30 kahit yung last one hour na lang? Or ituloy-tuloy? Bala kayo. Your call. Ma'am, may tanong. Yes, ano? Ma'am, yung sinabi na po sa mga Clamidia at Riketsha, ma'am, nag i pa sila sa loob ng macrophage, ma'am. Ano po yung factors mm -hmm. kung bakit sila nati-trigger, ma'am, na nag-reoccur ulit, ma'am? Well, it can trigger if, number one, the individual na will be immunocompromised. Masyadong mahina na yung kanyang immune system. So, since trigger sila, Aatake lang po sila kapag mahina na yung immune system ng tao. Or it can be, it can be in cases of multiple infections. Sasabay siya dun sa infection ng other microorganisms. At kapag nagkakaroon kasi tayo ng multiple infection, again, humihina na naman yung ating immune system, dun na naman po sila mag emerge So usually, it would be in cases to which mabab, mahina talaga yung immune system. Doon lang talaga sila nagkakaroon ng re-emergence. Um, kahit simple yung sakit lang, um, kahit lagnat, eh, nare-reoccur na pala sa, nare na pa sila. sila. Um. Hindi naman, but usually for yung mga, ang tawag dito, highly critical na mga situations natin, like if, siguro for individuals, pwede din siguro lagnat, but initially pala yung tao immunocompromised na. Let's say for example, yung tao meron siyang T or B cell na deficiency. Hindi siya nakakapag-produce ng masyadong maraming T cells or B cells. Like for example, may HIV pala siya. Diba yung HIV ang tinatarget niya is your T cells. So initially, immunocompromised na siya. With that of simple lang na fever, pwedeng matrigger din yun. Pwede din yun. Or it can actually be several years of being immunocompromised with that of cancer. Kasi prolonged, di ba, yung disease course ng ating cancer. So prolonged case of your cancer, it can dwindle, it can decrease yung strength ng ating immune system. Doon ulit sila matitrigger. Pwedeng ganun. Thank you, Pam. Or it can be also prolonged na steroids. Steroids, ang alam ninyo, kaya hindi nire-recommend ang prolonged na intake ng steroids. Kasi ang steroids, pinapababa niya po ang immune system ninyo. So kapag masyadong matagal na nag-take kayo ng steroids, it decreases that of your immune system. You are more prone to different types of infection. Yun din. Yes, ma'am. Hindi nga pa. Pwede yung break muna tayo. Wait lang. Inom lang ako ng tubig. Sorry. Na. Four minutes lang, please, guys. And then, pagbibigyan ko kayo ng masyadong mahabang break after. Please lang. Wait lang. of bacteria, kaya nga siya differential. It distinguishes organisms growing together by their differences in cultural characteristics. Dito kasi for differential medium, it would actually promote the growth of the organisms. But it would show different characteristics upon plating ng ating microorganism. So for example, yung isang microorganism would actually be color yellow. And then the other one would actually be color pink. Pero pareho silang tutubo dun sa medium na yun. That is actually for your differential medium. 
So it would allow grouping of microorganisms based on different characteristics demonstrated on the medium. So it will then be equipped with um, certain reagents like pH indicators or certain dyes. So an example, we have your, again, your BOP, your blood agar, and it would actually show different hemolytic patterns for that if you're streptococcus. We also have your EMB, your ethylene, uh, ASN methylene blue, rather, composed of lactose and sucrose together with dyes like your eosin and your methylene blue. And it is very famous, itong agar na to, yung EMB, for that of your E. coli. Always remember, must know to ha, wag na wag ninyong kakalimutan, very basic. For EMB, E. coli would then show a green metallic sheen. Always, patok na patok po yun sa board exam or sa, sa mga review centers. Basta kapag sinasabing green metallic sheen on EMB, wag na wag na mag-iisip ng kahit anong microorganism, E. coli na po ang sagot. So it would actually show ito, tignan ninyo. It would actually have that parang metallic na green, di ba, dun sa surface ng ating EMB. That is your E. coli. You also have your hectoen enteric agar. It would also be for the growth of your E. coli, but it would actually give off that yellow or orange fluorescence sa ating hectoen enteric agar. Excuse me. Another very important din na medium, lalong-lalo na sa water bacteriology, yung ating makonki agar. So it would actually differentiate yung mga organisms that can ferment lactose from those who cannot. So yung mga lactose fermenters natin, they are pink in color. Yung mga non-lactose naman, they would actually be clear, transparent, colorless. So yung mga components ng ating makonki, it would be lactose, bile salts. It would also contain inhibitory agents like your crystal violet to inhibit the growth of gram-positive at saka fungi kasi ang pinapromote niya lang would be the growth of your um, coliform, yung mga gram-negative natin na organisms, yung mga enterobacteria shea natin. It would also have a pH indicator like your neutral red. But in this particular slide, particularly in this particular picture rather, you would actually see na yung E. coli natin, it is a lactose fermenter. But it would also have the capability to have a clearing. Parang nilice niya, tignan mo. Parang sinira niya yung surroundings niya. There is a lysis that is observed around that of the growth, around that of the colony. That is very much characteristic for your E. coli being grown sa ating Makonki agar. Next, we also have your selective medium. It would support the growth of one type or a group of microorganisms, but not the other. It will just be selective. Gusto niya lang yung isang microorganism over that of the others. So it would contain inhibitory substances like antibiotics, like dyes, your alcohol that will then inhibit the growth of other microorganisms. Again, while promoting the growth of the desired natin na Organism. So a very good example would actually be your PA agar, your phenyl ethyl alcohol agar with 5% sheep blood. This will then inhibit the growth of the aerobic at saka facultative anaerobic gram-negative rods. And it will be only for the growth of your gram-positive cocci, such as your staphylococcus and your streptococcus. And in this case, if ako ang titingin nitong plate na to, I can infer that the growth is a streptococcus. Bakit? Kasi kung titignan ko, yung colony po ay puti. Very different from that of your staphylococcus, which is somehow yellowish in color. Para siyang, um, parang nana yung kulay niya. Alam niyo ba yung parang um, very thick na mucus, parang sipon na naluto, ganun. Ganun yung kulay usually ng um, staphylococcus. It's yellowish in color. Pero kapag white, that's more likely streptococcus. Soon in your histopath, 
uh, malalaman ninyo kasi yung yung staphylococcus it has this capability of being able to destroy cells kaya it's more dirty looking as compared to that of your as compared to that of your streptococcus kaya white yung streptococcus yellowish medyo yellowish yung ating um, staphylococcus And then we also have inhibitory agents that are being added. So we have those particular inhibitory agents that will inhibit the growth of gram-positive like crystal or gentian violet, your basic or carbophosine, your bile salts, your sodium desoxicolate. Those that would inhibit naman the gram-negs, we have your potassium telluride and your sodium azide. And those that would actually prevent the swarming of your proteus, we have your alcohol and chloral hydrate. So this particular agar, it would actually show the swarming motility of your proteus. Guys, wag na wag kakalimutan, basic na naman na information. Kapag may lumabas sa exam na nakalagay swarming motility, wag nang mag-iisip ng kahit anong organism, proteus na yun. Okay? Bakit swarming motility? Proteus would actually have a peritricus flagella. Ano na bang ibig sabihin ulit kapag peritricus? Naka, la, overall yung flagella yun. Okay. It would be studied. Yung buong katawan niya puno-puno ng flagella. Kaya it is responsible for a swarming motility. So in this particular plate, for example, Dito lang sa gitna, for example, mo nilagay yung proteus, di ba? After incubation of 24 to 48 hours, it will then eventually swarm and cover that of the entire agar. So, para siyang ripple na it will cover that of the entire surface of the agar plate. So again, we have your hectoen enteric agar for Salmonella and Shigella. And it would actually contain bile salts and that of also dyes like your bromthymol blue and your acid pochine. See, bromthymol blue acts as a pH indicator in order to check if yung ating agar would actually be of the correct pH. Tamang timpla ng ating pH para tumubo yung ating microorganism. And it would also be equipped with a hydrogen sulfide indicator, your ferric ammonium citrate. Bakit kailangan ng um, hydrogen sulfide? Again, yung main difference po kasi ni Salmonella at Shigella is their ability to assimilate, to metabolize hydrogen sulfide. At sino sa kanila yung nakakametabolize lang ng ating hydrogen sulfide? Si Salmonella. Kaya Salmonella would then produce a black precipitate. Kapag may nakita po kayong black precipitate on hectoen enteric agar, ang ibig sabihin nun, it can metabolize hydrogen sulfide. At sino yung pinakakilalang organism to metabolize hydrogen sulfide? Wag na wag na mag-iisip ng iba, si Salmonella lang po yun. So this is actually an example of your EGA. So, black yung precipitate. Sino na ulit yung ating organism more likely na nandiyo dyan? Si? Salmonella. Salmonella. Next, we also have your XLD. So, again, it's for the differentiation of your Salmonella and your Shigella. It would actually contain 0.25% sodium desoxicolate to inhibit the gram pus, a pH indicator, your phenol red, and again, your ferric ammonium citrate for the, excuse me, hydrogen sulfide. So, in this particular medium, colonies will then appear red, pero yung may black na center, again, kapag may black na color, it would actually be indicative of metabolization ng hydrogen sulfide. So, kapag red colonies with a black center, again, wag na wag mag-iisip ng iba, yan lang po ay si Salmonella. Next, we have the different culture medium for that of your gram pus. 
So we have your columbia colistin nalidisic acid with blood. So it would actually contain three pepton sources and 5% defibrinated sheep blood. So it has, it's actually equipped with colistin with nalidisic acid that tends to suppress the growth of the gram-negative organisms. So this is actually an example. Itong red lang na to. Wag yung kabila. Itong red. This is actually your columbia colistin nalidisic acid. And it will then present with white gram-positive colonies. Sino na ulit kapag white gram-positive colonies? Strep. Okay, your streptococcus. Next, we also have ulit again your PEA. Sheep blood agar supplemented with phenyl ethyl alcohol to inhibit the growth of your gram-negative bacteria. For the other selective bacteria, uh, other selective media rather, dinadagdagan siya ng antibiotics for the promotion or the growth of a particular microorganism. Like your gentamicin blood agar for streptococcus, we also have your basitracine chocolate agar. Always remember, kapag chocolate agar, mukha talaga siyang chocolate. So it can be light brown or dark brown kasi sila yung nasunog na RBC. So, basitracine chocolate agar for that of the growth of hemophilus and your blood agar plate with ampicillin for that of your aeromonas. So, again, meron tayong napakahabang table dito. If I were you, I would place this in an index card para kapag time na ng review for the board exam, hindi po ako mahihirapan. Kasi itong table na to, I tell you, nandito na lahat ng mga important points for that of any microbiology na, na, na question that would entail growth and that of also yung characteristic din ng growth na yun. Kasi in that of micro questions, minsan nagbibigay sila ng cases. At yung mga cases na yun, merong mga lumalabas na um, clue words. So, minsan sinasabi nila yun. Like, for example, my growth, and then it exhibited um, swarming motility. So, alam mo na, di ba, na proteus na yun. Minsan, magbibigay sila ng case, ang sinabi na ang ginamit na agar tapos tumubo dun sa agar na yun would actually be a particular colony. Yung colony na yun tumubo siya sa ating bordet gengo. Wag na wag na mag-iisip ng iba, bordetella pertussis yun, which is actually the causative agent of your whooping cough. So, itong table na to, it's very helpful for that of your board. So, please do memorize it and understand also para kahit pa paano, kahit pagbalik-balik ta rin yung mga questions, yung mga cases, once you are well acquainted with the clue words na nandito, hindi kayo malilito. So this table naman will actually just show you combination natin ng mga medium. Kasi ang isang culture medium, isang culture medium rather, hindi lang siya enriched. It can be enriched and selective at the same time. It can be selective and differential at the same time. So combined siya the medium. So general steps in the preparation of your culture medium, we actually have different ways on how to do it. But yung general natin na manner, first we need to determine the needed volume. Ilan ba yung uh, culture medium na gagawin natin? Ilan ba yung agar na kailangan natin i-prepare? And then determine the amount of each component of the medium that is needed. And then adjust the pH if necessary. And then dispense in appropriate natin na containers and then sterilize in autoclave. Usually itong mga steps na to, they are available in a manual that is present dun sa microbiology lab. Para siyang cookbook. Nandu doon yung ingredients ng ating um, culture medium. Tapos follow mo lang siya kung paano magluto usually ng ating culture medium. But for both tube at saka plated natin na medium, it's actually just the same yung ating mga steps. So first, we need to weigh that of the ingredients that are to be placed eventually sa ating mga containers and then dissolve the said ingredients 
thoroughly uh, via that of heat through that of yung ating Bunsen burner or din sa ating alcohol lamp. And then we tend to adjust yung ating pH via titration method. I think you're well aware na of the different steps ng titration from that of your analytical chemistry. And also, eventually, we tend to distribute them in different um, containers, either sa ating test tube or dun sa ating petri dish. And then prior to that of utilization, i-sterilize muna natin sila dun sa ating um, autoclave. So wait lang, I'm gonna show you a procedure and how to do it. So far, meron tayong question? Thank <laughs> you. 